Since the prototype release and all the information we had at the Computex 219, uh, today we're going to talk about the actual product. This is the Noctua NHP1 passive CPU cooler, tower cooler, whatever you want to call it. And this cooler is something definitely interesting just because it can allow you uh, less well basically non decibels inside your case because you don't have to use your fans of course there will be uh, some fans inside your build uh, when taking into consideration graphic card or the PSU but then again uh, the processor doesn't need anything of course it has a limit uh, for the TDP uh, of your processor so today we're going to use the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and of course we're going to place it in an open chassis since we are trying to uh, get rid of all as much fans as we can so in this case we're going to have only fans on the GPU that has a zero fan speed in terms of it won't spin until a certain load is carried on the GPU and of course the same thing will go with the uh, power supply now the P1 you can get at Amazon or Newegg or whatever I'll place the links below if you're interested in completely quiet environment and definitely a quiet build and in addition to that you can get the uh, NFA1225 uh, which uh, is sold separately and you can add it to the NHP1. Now for some specifications of the P1 uh, it's designed for passive cooling is already uh, stated it's a fanless cooling for high-end CPUs even though we will check it on mid-range CPU the 55600X you can increase definitely the performance with additionally uh, one fan which we're going to test the difference in temperatures with and without the NFA1225 uh, so of course since it doesn't have any fans that means uh, it uh, doesn't have any dust ex except for the one that falls directly on the cooler it also has an asymmetrical layout for optional PCI Express compatibility and it has uh, clearance for RAMs. When it comes to connecting and securing the tower cooler to your motherboard, you have there already known Secure Firm 2 uh, Plus uh, Torx based multi uh, socket mounting system. You already get uh, the NTH2 uh, next gen thermal compound, so thermal paste, it's all inside this box. When it comes to sizes, the height of uh, the cooler is. 40 millimeters when it comes to plates on the passive cooler and the white is 154 when the height is 158 so in most cases you can place this uh, passive cooler but then again uh, some cases can't go since it's 158 so my uh, advice would be up to 160 of CPU tower clearance when we're talking about the accessory box, you get the NTH2 as already stated, you get the uh, screwdriver just because you do need to push the screwdriver through the plates and lock the CPU tower cooler uh, to your motherboard and you get the additional fan clips for one 120 millimeter fan. With the Secure Firm 2 Plus mounting system you can mount it on uh, Intel or AMD so everything is inside this box. Also you get instruction manual on how to mount it so this as already stated and that you already know Noctua really nicely explains everything in this manual so uh, you can check it out if you decide to go with it uh, check out the manual to know how to install it now the Noctua Torx screwdriver uh, this is quite interesting you get it in addition to that and thermal paste uh, this is cleaning wipe AMD set and of course the Intel set now for the cooler uh, you will be amazed when you see it because it's quite a piece of machinery and here we go now let's check this out this is it so you have 13 plates and comparing it to a typical air cooler they are separated more than your standard heatsink and the reason why Noctua did this is the hot air does need to go 
through somehow and going with this separation between the plates it gives the hot air more space to go through the plates and eventually go up and take the heat up now when we're talking about the heat pipes you have six of them going through the 13 plates and at the bottom now these are the connection to your cold plate and when you take the plastic off you can see that six uh, plates are actually at the bottom going to the cold plate now they aren't uh, soldiered together uh, only the heat pipes are and the heat pipes are actually the ones uh, dissipating the heat so six are here and the rest of the seven are on the far left side because here we have the clearance for the rams of course you can rotate uh, the cooler any way you want but you can decide that depending on your motherboard or depending on your ram clearance or anything else also we have here six holes and these are numbered one two three so these are the holes that you can uh, use for uh, attaching or adding your fan to the passive heatsink so today we're going to uh, use an open chassis and to test the cooling of the Noctua NHP1 on the Ryzen uh, 5 5600X with and without the NFA12. Of course, this will give uh, quite interesting results uh, checking out the temperatures and uh, definitely going to build a some suitable build just for the sake of the Noctua NHP1. Of course, the thermals are uh, the ones that we are aiming for so let's build it and check out what you actually guys need to know about the NHP one this was the only open chassis that I have uh, and decided to build it in Antex Striker just to see how will it perform and use the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X because it has a maximum TDP of 65 watts and I think it would uh, cool it quite all right concerning it's a passive cooler and you're getting um, let's say zero decibel uh, zero noise when it comes to cooling so the only fans we have uh, are on the gpu and on the power supply uh, i used seasonic prime snow silent which has the hybrid mode so when the load is not uh, that much it doesn't turn on the fan and the gpu uh, also does the same uh, basically it's quite interesting and i did two sets of uh, benchmarks first one was in this position so the vertical position of the case well basically the standard position of the case and the second ones were when the case was flat on the table just because the plates here make a dissipation between the plates and upwards and in the other situation since we have uh, holes here uh, it would make dissipation of the heat right here so in that terms uh, I wrote everything down because there's just too many <laughs> temperatures and results so let's start uh, with the uh, case standing flat on the surface of the table in idle fan blowing from the CPU towards out uh, the temperature was 52 fan blowing inside towards the CPU was 54 and without any fan was 56 with maximum load in AIDA 64 extreme edition fan blowing towards the CPU was 74 and fan blowing outside from the CPU was also 74 celsius degrees without any fans on full load it went up to 88 so plates facing down so I'm talking about this current position uh, we have in idle fan blowing from the CPU 59, fan blowing towards the CPU 55, which is kind of surprising because, I don't know, it, it would be logical that the fan blowing the air from the CPU out would get better temperatures. But since we have a different position of the uh, cooler, it kind of does as it is. The only issue in this case is that the motherboard IO ports are here on the bottom so for instance if you uh, 
used a case that has the IO ports here at the back, this plates would be facing upwards. So it's a that's why I used the horizontal line when placing the case. Now, next in line, uh, no fan in this position was 56 on idle Celsius degrees. Now, maximum load, fan blowing towards the CPU 74, fan blowing from the CPU 76. Again, doesn't make sense, but the cooling does work in either positions, either flat or in this one and without any fans, so 92 degrees. The difference in position of the heatsink of the passive cooler is definitely important because uh, it all depends how it's going to dissipate hot air uh, from the CPU towards the outside and in the air. And now one thing I do have to state since it's really hot uh, in this room, it's I think maybe 30 Celsius degrees. Temperatures might be even lower if it was standard 22 Celsius degrees room temperature. So you do need to take that into consideration as well. First of all, it's a uh, well, basically, temperatures could go even more if you use a higher tier processor, so above 5600X, and it would, and they stated it goes up to 100 Celsius degrees. Now, th this is, you can't expect a passive cooler to have a decent temperatures like a uh, standard CPU tower cooler with fans or uh, AIO. It's logical. But then again, you're getting zero decibel. That's, that's the whole point. No noise coming from the cooler, cooling the CPU. The only negative side is you get the uh, higher temperatures, which then again, 88 Celsius degrees on 5600X uh, and full load is quite nice. Basically zero decibels, 88 Celsius degrees and no fans whatsoever, except on the graphic card and on the power supply, which are also zero RPMs if not enough load or temperature is uh, basically applied to the power supply or the graphic card. So guys, uh, yeah, quite interesting, very easy to handle, very easy to mount. Also, the interesting thing is the Torx screwdriver, so standard Phillips uh, screwdriver might get top of the screw a bit uh, uh, worn out. This way it won't happen because first of all it has uh, six uh, parts here and they don't get worn out that easily. Uh, and also really cool to have uh, this kind of screwdriver just because it fits perfectly inside. You don't have to worry about the plates uh, blocking your standard screwdriver that you have at home. And uh, what else? That's all there is to it. I'll place the links for the Noctua NHP1. Uh, it's up to you to decide are you going to go with passive zero decibel and higher temperatures or for the same price go with the uh, active cooling some decibel noise around 30 decibels uh, and uh, that's basically it so guys links for the noctua nhp1 are in the description below don't forget to subscribe for future content uh, click the thumbs up button for the video and also uh, don't forget to click the notification bell for future videos thank you for watching today's video and hopefully i will see you in another one bye bye